Top of the top, I'm Dijon Paul, editor-in-chief of the Daily Magazine and founder of the New LA Rap Report card. So last year on January 11th, I made this shocking post. Uh, we shook up the timeline uh, from the death threats to muster hopping in the workshops, the no jumper interview, to the quoted tweets, the retweets, the Instagram comments, the LA Times story and whatnot. Um, it just was a definitely a, a defining time for LA rap. So I wanted to come back and do a video breakdown for the second report card with the same categories. So let's go through the categories before we get to the grades. First is lyricism, impact, cadence, flow, catalog, consistency, music videos, beat selection, branding, originality, and versatility. I score each of the artists in those categories and come up with an average grade. That does not mean that I don't like these artists. It's not personal. It's just a musical assessment, a musical opinion. So let's get to some of these grades. All right, man, so let's start with G. Perico's grade. He got an 85, which is a B. His uh, lyricism, I gave him a six. This is actually my favorite point on the entire report card. That's why I put it first. Um, I feel like G. Perico would be a top tier artist, not just in LA, but just the West Coast in general, if he uh, raps better, if he put more emphasis into his lyricism, if he wrote his rhymes out instead of freestyling, if he put pen to pad and actually just took time to write. I feel like a lot of his bars be freestyles, a lot of his bars be like this off the top of the dome instead of being like thought about and constructive. So I gave him a six in lyricism. Impact wise, he got an eight. Uh, cadence wise, he got a 10. He has one of the best cadences in, in, in the West Coast hip hop. He sounds a little bit like Easy E, but uh, it's definitely a distinct West Coast flow. Uh, his flow is a 10. He can rap. His catalog is a six because I feel like he doesn't have like a classic body of work, like an undisputed classic body of work. He does have some semi classics like the All Blue Project or whatnot. Um, as of late, LA Summers Volume 2, I felt like it wasn't like an all star project, so I felt like it wouldn't uh, waver his catalog score. So it's a six. Consistency is a 10 because, well, he's like the most consistent solo MC in Los Angeles. Um, music video is a seven, which is solid. Uh, beat selection is a 10. I love his beats. Uh, Goddamn it, Dupree does a lot of his production. They've done whole projects together including the project they just dropped in December, as well as the LA uh, Summers Volume 2 and 1, I believe. So the Beast is a 10, R10. Brandon Wise is a 10, the blue t-shirt idea is genius and it's doing well. We see him doing a lot of uh, different events in the city and just uh, moving his enterprise brand since leaving Rock Nation. Original is a nine, I took a point off because he does sound a little bit like Easy e And you know, so I had to take a point off there. And then versatility is an eight, so that gives us an 85, which is the B. Um, which is cool. That's a good grade. Uh, next, we have Westside Boogie, who obviously gets a 10 in lyricism because I feel like if you put Boogie in a room with anybody on the support bar, he's going to outwrap them at this very moment. Um, an 8 in impact, a 10 in cadence. I mean, the man can rap 10 in flow. 8 in catalog. I feel like um, we're waiting to see that all star classic project like that Good Kid Mad City, My Crazy Life type of album from him, but more Black Superheroes was a phenomenal project, a semi-classic in my opinion. A six in consistency because it took him forever to drop that project, and he knows that, so he'll know what that six means. A 10 in music videos because his music video concepts are crazy, especially with all the alter egos and all the different things that he does in that, in that um, capacity. A seven in beat selection, his, his beats are, you know, it's solid, seven is solid. Eight and Brandon, he definitely, you know, we've seen him on the breakfast stuff. We've seen him on Funk Flex. We've seen him get those uh, premier press runs and press opportunities, as well as uh, do things with Pro Club and things like that. Uh, nine in originality, I only took a point off because he does sound a little bit like Kendrick, just slightly. So I took one point off for originality. And then for versatility, he got a nine. That averaged out to an 86, which is a B. So Jason Cash, this is um, this one's funny to me because last year we know about the D plus that he got, the D plus record that he dropped, and that whole situation. I'm not gonna call it a diss, but he did address me and the report card in that grade, in that record. And since we've seen him do a lot of great things, including drop record of the year, well, project of the year with Read the Room, and link up with Mustard for uh, the Top Down record, as well as sign with Atlantic Records. So um, let's start with his grade. So lyricism is a ten. Obviously, I feel like he's another one of those guys. If you put him in a room, he can outwrap anybody. Impact is a seven. I feel like Jason Cash has one of the uh, hottest names in the city 
as far as uh, new artists goes. Ten in cadence, ten in flow. Foreign catalog, he only has one project, Leave the Room, but again, it was the best rap project to drop out of LA last year. So that's a strong four points. Consistency is gonna be an eight because he has been dropping a freestyle or a new song every single Friday since Read the Room dropped um, with his Freestyle Friday endeavors, as well as the uh, other endeavor he does where he pulls up on Tastemaker to play the new music on camera on Fridays. Music videos are seven. I feel like the top down video, and I told him this personally in front of Mustard, that the top down video could have been a lot better. But other than that, his music video is solid. I do like the him video with Doc Kennedy, so I got a seven. 10 and B selection because the Easy Boys are like the best production group in Los Angeles. Um, 10 and Brandon, um, he just really reps his brand in crowd. He has artists like the Easy Boys and his endeavors. He has the in crowd chain, in crowd merch, a collaboration with Pro Club, the Pro Club, Club in crowd T. It's just um, a lot of great branding on his part. Uh, 8 in originality because I feel like he does remind me of Doc Kennedy a little bit. A lot of it, so I gave him an eight in originality. And then a six in versatility, um, because obviously, and I wouldn't want him to make a street record, but he could give us like some party records, I guess, so that's why I gave him a uh, six in versatility, which averaged out to an 81 B minus, which is a long way from a D plus, so shout out to Kaylin. Shout out to Jason Cash. <laughs> so the next person is Kaylin for real, for real. His lyricism is a six. Last year was a five, and I feel like with his 222 project, he did step it up this much as far as lyrics, so it's a six. Uh, his impact's an eight, his cadence is an eight, his flow's a seven. His catalog is a nine. We really need to talk about Caleb's catalog. I feel like that's something that's like left out of the mix a lot of times. I feel like people sleep on Two For Real One and Two For Real Two and don't call them classics, but to me those are classic projects. I feel like maybe because he's melodic, they don't want to give it the classic theme. If it was straight rapping, they would, but for me, I give those two projects uh, the classic title. Um, Leak the Tape I didn't like, so maybe that's why it's a nine, because I, I didn't like Leak the Tape. That's like a scratch on his catalog to me. Ten in Consistency, eight in music videos, B selections of ten, he always picks poppy beats, but it's still mixed with traffic music. It's like traffic pop, I like it. It's like a traffic singer, a traffic rap mixed with Justin Bieber. It's, 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 it's odd, but I like it. Um, his brand is a 10, signed to Rock Nation. We see him doing commercials and, and uh, big tours and all those great things, working with Puff, things like that. Originality is a 10, and his, versati his versatility is an 8. So that averaged out to an 85, which is a B. So, so far we're doing good with Bs. I know you guys waiting on an F. And so, I'll talk about somebody with an F. So Blueface got an F. Blueface got a 58. Um, no surprise here. Um, he is a popular name, one of the most popular rappers out the West Coast, but his lyricism was a three. Obviously, uh, his impact is an eight because he is such a big name on the shade room every day on all the big blogs. Not for music, but his, his impact is his impact. Cadence is an eight. His flows too because he's always rapping, rapping off beat. I feel like he doesn't take rap seriously to hear in his uh, delivery. Uh, catalogs are four, no classic. Uh, projects, classic albums, or anything, just a couple of big singles years ago. It's been a minute. Um, Consistency is a three. He hasn't dropped a project, a full length project, in like two years. Uh, music videos are six. I don't, no, nothing remarkable on that end. Six and B selection, a lot of F beat production sounding beats. Not saying it's from F beats, but it sounds F beat ish. Um, a 10 in Brandon, obviously, got the show. I forgot the name of the show, Krishan Rock that I do enjoy. I watched a couple episodes of it. It was good. So yeah, shows on Zeus, and then he does his own uh, OnlyFans content and all those different avenues. We see him at Fashion Week, so 10 and Brandon definitely. Originality is an 8 because the only person I feel like he bit off of was is Frosty, the snowman. So I took a couple points off of that. And then his versatility is a 6. The versatility could be lower even, but 58 F, and let's move on. Um, RJ Mr. LA, I'm so happy to have him on here. I'm so happy that he came back to rap, to LA rap, to West Coast hip hop. He is one of my favorite rap artists of all the time. There was a point in time when he was the number one rapper in Los Angeles, so I can't wait to see him get back to that point. I believe he can. So let's start with this grade. His lyricism was a 10, because um, he can rap his ass off. His impact is a 10. I feel like it wavered, but with the Rodney Brown Jr. album, uh, or LP rather that he did come back and so I, I gave him that back a 10. Cadence is a 10, flow is a 10, that's just, come on. 
catalog is an eight. He did drop a couple of um, Let Me Talk My Shit and On God I didn't care for. So I took a point off each of those. But everything else he dropped has been remarkable to me in his uh, career. Consistency is a, is a five because he did take a, a short break from putting out full uh, albums. Uh, music videos are six. He could step that up, in my opinion. Ten and B selection from Larry J, uh, DJ Swish, Loda Gray. He does pick great beats. Uh, obviously, we want him back on uh, Mustard's production, but it is what it is. Uh, seven and Brandon. Uh, I feel like the Amio brand, people know what Amio is. People know that there is an Amio label, but we do need to see maybe some new Amio artists or something to that effect before I can give them like a 10 in branding. But people do know the Amiel branding. Me personally, I would buy a shirt or a hoodie that said Amiel on it. So there's Amiel brand there. Uh, originality is a 10. I don't think he sounds like anybody else. And versatility is a nine, which averaged out to an 86B. First film C on the list, first female rapper, AJ the one. I gave her an eight in lyricism. Um, I feel like she is one of our best spitters as far as women rappers go in Los Angeles. Um, a three in impact, uh, eight in Kate's. I do like her voice. Small improvements as far as uh, pronunciations would be cool and maybe a little bit more nuanced, but it's a solid voice. Uh, her flow's are eight, flow solid as well. Catalogs are three. She only has uh, one project, her debut project, The Box, which is pretty good, but it's still only one project, so that's a three. Consistency is a five from AJ because she has dropped singles in like 2019, 2020. So it took a while to come out with a project, but I feel like she's gonna uh, stay consistent going forward because she just dropped a new song with Daddy G. Shout out to him. Uh, eight in music videos, we love the um, the video she did with Ray when she's on the rooftops and they threw a girls party and Boogie popped through. Yeah, the Nervous record, excuse me, so I feel like that video was dope. Uh, beat selection of six, Drew Banger. Uh, Lace up with good beats, but I do wanna hear her over some more, even funkier, even more ratchet. Uh, blended beats. I feel like she'll do great over that. Uh, brand is a five. She is brand minded. She is very intelligent. I believe she wants to Berkeley. I just uh, want to see her apply it some more to her branding because especially as a woman rapper, the, the uh, it's endless potential. So many avenues you can go being a uh, female rapper as far as brand. Um, ten originality. You know, I don't think she sounds like any other woman rapper in Los Angeles because there's not a lot of prominent women rappers in Los Angeles in the first place. And then her versatility is a 10 because she writes about a lot of different subjects. So that average out to a 67, which is a D plus. I'm sure she'll do, she'll do better next year. Um, YG, you would think it would be an F, but it's not. You would really think it would be an F, and I crunched the numbers, and an F, an F didn't come out, so I crunched the numbers again, and an F didn't come out, so he didn't get an F. YG didn't get an F. So lyricism is a five. Uh, his impact is a 10. His cadence is a seven. His flow is a three. And let's talk about why his flow is a three. I feel like uh, YG to me has never been a phenomenal MC. It's just all the pieces came together for him and it came across as authentic. His story came across as authentic. The personality came across as authentic. But if we really were to go back to the beginning of his rap career, there never was an overly impressive flow to him. We did like his voice, which is why his cadence was like a solid voice. But the the flow was never overly impressive, so I give him a three in flow, an eight in catalog. Obviously, he's made some of the greatest rap albums of all time, like My Crazy Life, and then mixtape wise, Just Read Up One, Just Read Up Two. But again, I'm taking off points for bad, uh, for terrible projects like the album he dropped, I Got Issues, last year. I had to take a point off of that, the project before that, and to take a point off of that. So. Uh, consistency is a 10 because he does give you an album every year, a project every year, whether it's a compilation or some six in music videos, because I'm tired of seeing the sombreros and the guitars and the tap dance shoes and, and all that stuff. I'm over that aesthetic. Three in beat selection because we want to hear him back with Mustard. Like, I want to hear him back over Mustard's production very bad, terribly bad. So three in beat selection. Ten in Brandon because I believe that 400, his color brand, he said it's like a $50 million company or something to that uh, effect. And I know that it is in Zoomies and Paxline and those are big contracts. So 10 and Brandon. And we have seen him move his label from Interscope to Epic Records, his 400 label. So he definitely gets a 10 and Brandon. A 10 and originality, YG is YG. He's a, um, a permanent fixture in West Coast hip hop. And versatile is a, a 10 because, you know, 
he makes love records, party records, uh, socially conscious records like Fuck the Police and Fuck Donald Trump. Like he, he is versatile, so that's a chance. That averaged out to a 74, which is a C. YG did not get an F, and you do not have to comment. We know the truth for any of that underneath my report card posts, because I block it. Uh, next is Sham1016, who's from the West Side, one of my favorite West Side MCs today. Um, he got a nine in lyricism because he's a, he's a real spinner. A three in impact because most people don't know who he is. He's very low key. A uh, ten in cadence, ten in flow. Boy can rap. What can I say? A six in catalog. I feel like his champ album that he just dropped with Walt Monson, a man. So excuse me. Just lifted up his uh, catalog some for me. Consistency is a ten. He dropped two projects last year. Uh, seven in music videos. Uh, since the Internet Bangers video m moving forward, he has always put thought into his Drew Robinson, Allen B. directed optics. Um, a 10 in B selection, a 9 in branding. He is he makes all his own graphics. He designs all his own merch, and he's adamant about it. And he has um, my favorite thing about him. I want to mention he has these press friendly sites. So he'll create a he'll drop a project, then he'll create a site just for press, for bloggers, the media people. And you'll be able to go to it and get the uh, defined artwork and the track list and notes and, and, and liner notes and all the all the press materials you need. That's smart thinking for me. And then nine in originality and a ten in versatility. Average out to an 84B. Shout out to Sham. All right, so next up is Mr. Spiffy Luciano, who went viral a few weeks ago when he tweeted um, a, a very interesting tweet about who he feels is talented and whatnot. He said, only person in LA I feel like really got talent other than me is Blast, real genuine talent. So let's go through his grade and I'll let you decide. Uh, lyricism is a six. He can rap, but I feel like he could apply more writing to his records, uh, more structure to his records, definitely. Impact is a three because when he tweeted that, most people didn't know who he was, couldn't name a record, as, couldn't, as I couldn't. Um, a six in cadence. Like his voice is okay, it's solid, six is solid. Uh, flow five, could use some improvement. Three in catalog, doesn't really have projects or records that are notable. Again, he signed a Brucey Badass, uh, Badass Entertainment label. I should have prefixed it with that. Uh, three in consistency, he hasn't dropped a project in years, a full project in years rather. Um, he did drop an EP, so excuse me on that, but a full length project he has not dropped. Uh, five in music videos. An eight in beat selection. His beats are solid. He has some trappish beats, but he also has some, some hard hitting traffic rap beats too. So his beats are solid. Five in branding. Uh, the only nod I would give him is being associated with Boosie Badass doing those viral freestyles with Boosie introducing him and whatnot. Um, seven in originality. And a six in versatility that comes out to a 51, which is an F, our second F so far. Uh, Final Blueface. So yeah. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, uh, everyone knows, just to you know, put it out there, he's not necessarily my favorite artist. I don't write around listening to Kendrick's music, but when I take time to listen to it for editorial purposes such as this, he's Kendrick Lamar. So a 10 in, in lyricism, obviously, a 10 in impact, obviously. A 10 in cadence, I do like his voice. A 4 in flow. And let me just say, I don't like when people rap like that. I don't like rippity rappity Eminem, Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj type of rapping. Like, I've never been into that. To me, it's like you're trying to impress me with the, with the words instead of telling me what's going on or informing me of something. I just don't like how he raps like that. A uh, three in consistency. I mean, this was his first project. Mr. Morale and the Big Step was his first project in like six years. So that's a three. Ten in music videos. The music videos are out of this world. That's why I do like Kendrick to an extent. Like, I put him with the Busta Rhymes, Missy Elliott's in terms of music video making. Um... Three and B selection, especially with that last album. Like, that was crazy. Like, a lot of Afro beats and techno blends mixed with the spoken word shit. It's just, I would love to hear him over some real West Coast production that sounds like Compton. Um, a 10 in originality, he's Kendrick Lamar. And a 9 in versatility. The only thing he doesn't make is, like, you know, real street records. But do we want a street record from Kendrick? You know what I'm saying? So a 9, which came out to a. Uh, uh, B minus, which is the 80. I know a lot of people want to say, how is the greatest rapper of this generation, according to New York Times, and a Pulitzer Prize winner getting a lower grade than other artists like a Caitlin for Real, for Real West Side Boogie? It's the score. You know, you put the scores in, and that this is what averages out. Averages out to an 80. That doesn't mean that they are better artists than him, or he's a better artist or whatnot. 
It just means that this is the assessment, this is how the numbers work. Um, AZ Chite, who got a D or a D plus last year, uh, he got a C minus this year. No, a C, just a straight up C, excuse me. So A in lyricism, Chite can rap. Chite can really rap, is it out of this world rapid? No, so I give it a solid A. Impact is a five, I feel like Chite should be a much bigger name. I just feel like he needs a better team that is focused on making him a much bigger name and making him one of the most prominent artists in California, not just LA, but in California and on the West Coast because he has so many fans in the Bay. And I feel like he's not tapping into that sound enough and that marketing that niche enough. So I definitely want to hear him do that more or see him do that more rather. Um, with his flow, solid, like an eight. Flow's an eight, cadence is an eight, his voice is solid. Eights are solid to me. It's like not over the top good, but it's it's right there, it just needs a little bit of work. Catalog is a six. I feel like he doesn't have like a classic debut project. Richard Ratchet was dope though. Richard Ratchet was very dope, but since we haven't had anything of that magnitude, he dropped Chike different, and it sounds what it looks like last year. Both solid projects, but again, I'm using this word solid too much in terms of West Coast hip hop. I wanna be using words like great, amazing, phenomenal, out of this world, I'm ecstatic about it. I'm tired of saying the word solid. Um, consistency is a 10, because like I said, he dropped two projects last year. The year before that, he dropped a project with Ruchi. So he has been on his business, or about his business. A seven in music videos. Uh, six in beat selection, I want him to, I want him to go on his phone and block Fort Woe, the producer, and block a few of the producers he's been working with. I want to hear him over Bay Area production. I want to hear him over nostalgic, Retro, uh, early 80s, I mean, late 80s, early 90s sounded production, but mixed with traffic rap. I, I would just take him to a whole different sonic. I feel like the sonic that he has been using hasn't worked. Like, we tried the industrial sound and music from him for a while. It hasn't worked. It hasn't charted. It hasn't broken through. It hasn't landed him a huge buzz single. The last real buzz single he had was Amiri. So I definitely need to hear better beats. And that was really great who did that. Um, Brandon's a six, originality is a ten, Chike is one of a kind, and versatility is a seven. So they averaged out to a seven three, which was a C, not a C minus, but a C. So shout out to him. Uh, Savvy Third, who I believe got an F, he's one of the most improved artists as well. He got a C minus, which is a seven. He's a Long Beach uh, native, uh, formerly of Cash Money West. So he got an eight in lyricism. I look at Savvy like a uh, uh, a blue tinted version, I'll say that, of Ruchi. They remind me of each other. They're uh, polars, in my opinion. Um, contemporaries, rather. So an eight in lyricism, because Savvy can rap, but it's just solid. Five in impact, he should be at a much bigger stage at this point in his career. Uh, seven, but to his defense, as we discussed with him, he's had run-ins with the law, he's been in jail, he's had personal issues, family losses, so I do want to give him grace there, but he should be a much bigger name. A uh, seven for cadence, like his voice is okay, but I do I do wish it was a little bit different. Seven for flow, solid. Six catalog, eight in consistency. He could step it up a little more for me. Music videos just be a lot of hood niggas standing around um, on hood time, and so that's a six in music videos. Eight in beat selection, okay. Uh, five in branding. I, I couldn't tell you what Savvy's record label called. I don't, you know what I'm saying. I don't see the Savvy third. Uh, merch being pushed or a brand being pushed merch wise and whatnot. Originality is a 10 and versatility is a 7, so that's a C minus. Uh, Aja, our second. Is that our second film C? Yeah, our second film C on the list. Uh, Princess of Compton, she got an F last year as well. She improved just as much. She has a 7, which is a C minus. Five in lyricism. She's like a, at that rate of a Caleb Brooker where the music is dependent on the melody, not so much the words, but imagine if there was melody and some lyrics there. Ah, ah, then it'd be dope. So we got a six in impact, a nine in cadence, because I do like her voice, a six in flow, because I feel like she could find nuance to blend with those melodies. Her catalog is a six because there's no classic project there, but there are tapes that you could cherry pick a few good songs off of. Another six in consistency because she had not dropped um, a full project in a while. She did drop Miss Calls Volume uh, 1 at the end of last year, but I believe that's more of an EP or a short project. Uh, her music videos are a four. There's no phenomenal music videos from her. 
Brie Selection's a nine. And Brandy's a nine. She is the, the face of Bel Air as it pertains to LA uh, rap artists. Um, originality is a nine. I took the point off because of the Dage Loaf influence. Remember, I told you I was taking points off if I could think of an artist you sound somewhat like. And then a, a nine for versatility, which averaged out to a 70, which is a C minus. Uh, next is my guy, Bino, man. I'm, I'm real proud of how Bino performed on this um, on this report card, given that I didn't necessarily care for his uh, most recent project, Sorry for the Way 2. I feel like it could have been a lot better. It was very low key. And um, I want him to, you know, it had been like two years since he dropped the project, so I definitely want him to come harder. But still, get his back catalog and just his presence in LA rap and him doing a tour helped his grade out a lot. So he got an eight in lyricism, a 10 in impact because he is one of our most important artists, uh, eight in cadence, a 10 in flow, eight in cadence because it's hard to understand what he's saying sometimes, so I have to take the points off in that regard. 10 in flow, uh, eight in consistency, a nine in music videos, a 10 in beat selection, you know, always got the, the slapping beats, a five in branding because I feel like you know, he could be doing a lot more on the brand in front. Like, I don't necessarily know. I know he signed out the Blue Records, but I don't know what his movement is. Excuse me. And then um, a 10 in, no, a 9 in originality and a 10 in versatility. Average out to an 86, which is a B, one of the best grades on um, the report card so far. Blast got a 6 in there, too. Because I feel like he says a lot of the same shit. He doesn't really, you know, it's, it's, he doesn't mix up the lyrics. It's, the writing is just the same uh, approach, same concept, same intention every song. And with Blast, more so, it's more about like, it's just very lukewarm. You know, I want passion from him lyrically. I want him to, I want anger or rage or happiness, joy, elation. You get what I'm saying? I don't just want here, like, oh, I'm having a good day or I'm having a bad day because my girl is mad at me. I want, like, I'm pissed off, I'm mad, or I'm super happily in love with somebody. Or, you know what I'm saying? I want an extreme. I like extremities. I don't like uh, lukewarm approaches to writing. So I feel like his lyricism is a six. His impact's a 10. He's one of the hottest artists, period. Like, he's Grammy nominated and everything. Double platinum with the chosen record. Uh, six in cadence. His voice is okay. Aiden flow. His flow's okay. Catalog is a six because I like Kim with Vino. Now, Blast and Vino, 10. But Blast by himself, just a six, because I didn't like before you go or before I go. This project can drop last year. I didn't like that at all. It was on my worst projects of the year list, actually. Um, Consistency is a 10. He drops music. Music videos are a 10. His music videos be big budgeted, you know, fly, lavish videos. He put a lot of uh, effort and emphasis to his style and just the scenes and camera angles and stuff. So shout out to his director. I wish I had. I wrote down the name of his director. Seven in beat selection. The Easty Boys lay some of the good beats, but when he makes his own beats, it sounds redundant. Like when he does his own beats, it sounds like the same blast sounding beat. Like you go on YouTube, you type in blast type beat, and that's the whole album. Uh, Brandon is a 10, signed to Red Bull Records, and just a plethora of uh, Brandon endeavors on his end. A 10 in originality and a 4 in versatility, which averaged out to a 79, which is a C. Plus. All right, let's talk about maybe the biggest name on this list, probably Roddy Rich, uh, Grammy Award winning, Diamond Selling, Atlantic Records sign, uh, Megastar. So he got a, no, let's start with his grade. He got a C plus, which is a seven, he got a 77, which is a C plus. Um, I believe he got a C plus last year, so about the same. Uh, he got a five in lyricism, a 10 in impact, because he is a Megastar, a seven in cadence, a six in flow, a seven in catalog. Um, I had to take some points off for of that Live Life Fast project that he dropped December of 2021. That was terrible. And then that little three pack EP he dropped after that was terrible. So I started, you know, knocking points off. But the Feed the Streets mixtape series is dope. I like the second half of Feed the Streets 3, the project he dropped most recently. I don't like the first half. But from the Ashley Martin Truck record forward, that shit is fire. And it reminds me of the original two Feed the Street uh, tapes. Uh, consistency, he got a 10 because he has been dropping. Uh, music videos, a 10. I do like his videos. I'll go on YouTube and watch his videos before I listen to his music in my car. Uh, five and B selection. Uh, it's too, too trap. Too much trap. I want to hear him get back with Hit Boy. So if you watch the Academics Hit Boy interview, Hit Boy says, you know, you got your first and only Grammy with me. 
uh, doing the Racks in the Middle record, why haven't I worked with Roddy Rich again? Why haven't I seen him since doing that Grammy Award winning record together? So I feel like he needs to get back with a hit boy or uh, do a whole project with Mustard or just find some LA or West Coast producers rather than give him that real um, sinister sound with heavy bass that pairs well with his voice. I feel like uh, I want to hear the Compton sonics in his music more. It's like, you're not gonna, the, you're not gonna, I don't want to hear the trap beat. So five and B selection. That's probably my biggest knock against him. Ten and Brandon, he's a household name at this point. Uh, nine in originality, because the only person I can think of him sounding like is Doug, and that's from an entirely different region, so I took a point off of that. And then six in versatility, which came out to, again, a 77, which is a C+. Plus. Um, I might not need this for, my, for the next uh, group. Blue Bus Clan, my favorite um, artist to listen to from LA. Like if I get, if you get in my car, I'm gonna play them. If I'm smoking at the house, or if I'm at a kickback, or anything, and I'm on Aux, I'm definitely gonna play Blue Bus Clan. They got an 84, which is a B. Last year they got like a 79, which was like a C plus. So there was some improvement since they have dropped the See the Difference EP, which was fire, and they dropped their debut album. Clanway 3, which I don't want to say it was disappointing, but I feel like it could have been a lot better. So let's get into the grade. Lyricism is a nine. Some people are gonna feel like I got the sliders up on that. Like, how do you think their lyrics are a nine? It's nuanced listening. To me, they say slick shit. They say shit that pierces you. When I listen to that music, it makes me want to go get some money. It makes me feel broke. It makes me feel insignificant. So it serves a purpose because it makes me want to, it's a call to action. It makes me want to go touch some bread. So that's why I like the lyricism. Um, Impact is an eight. Cadence is an eight. Flow is an eight. All solid. All solid across the board. Catalog is an eight. You got to think they got Clanway one, Clanway two. Uh, no feelings one, no feelings two. No, excuse me, no rules one, no rules two. And then now we have the uh, Clan Virus 1, Clan Virus 2, and now we got Clan Way 3. So they have been dropping plenty of tapes, which is why their catalog is an 8 and the consistency is a 10. Music videos are an 8 um, because the Can't Believe It video finally had a storyline. They're hit, like robbing a bank or hitting a lick or something to that effect. They're masked up. So we got a better music video. And then See the Difference video from earlier this year. They got the road truck on PCH. They go to the optometry office. It's not just them standing around shopping with their homies, drinking um, B selection is a 10, 10, 11, AO Mook, resources, and then the Chop Squad DJ record, uh, added up. Hardest beat I heard last year. This genius, seriously. It reminded me of rap niggas in the car, the Nipsey Hussle record, with that G Funk synth over that track beat. It's like, ah, y'all found something. So I want to see them work with Chop Squad more, but 10, 11 been holding them down for years. Brandon Wise, they got a, a 10. The merch is crazy. Uh, touring with OGZ. A lot of different uh, ventures they got there on Wii screen and things like that. Um, originality is a 8. A lot of times you'll hear people say like, oh, uh, DJ sounds like a little bit like Draco. Or you'll hear people say, oh, GZ sounds like PZ or a Detroit rapper. Or you'll hear people just generally say that they sound like Detroit rappers. So I make a point off or point or two off of that. And then a six in versatility, that's something that we can really talk about. I feel like I want to hear some substance from them. I get it, you guys, you know, you drip, the fashion there, you fucking niggas, bitches. We got it. We, we've heard it. I want to hear about the struggle. I want to hear what the east side and the low bottoms, which is where they come from, what does that sound like? What does that feel like in the morning? What does that feel like late at night? I feel like if they gave us a sinister project, uh, I was watching Dan Presidents the other day, and I was like, man, imagine if they put this type of danger and risk on wax, like, in regards to the low bottoms. Like, I feel like if they told stories about heist on that side of town with their rhyming patterns, the back and forth and whatnot, that'd be dope. So I just feel like we need to mix it up with Blue Bus Clan, which gives us an 84, which is a B, a good grade. Again, it's a huge improvement from last year. So shout out to them. Uh, who's next? Lambo Foe, who is uh, the, rec the gentleman with the record Self Esteem, featuring uh, Nelly Chop on a remix. And supposedly he has Lil Baby coming on another remix for that. The Kisses for Me record. And now he has a new bus single, Keep Going. Um, he got a five in lyricism. Um, he's not the best rapper, but he can make a nice bus single. I'll give him that. Three in impact. Most people don't know who he is, but they do know that Kisses for Me record. Uh, six in cadence, seven in flow. 
uh, 10 inconsistency, no, no, 8, excuse me, 8 inconsistency. He does have a lot of EPs. I believe he has 4 to 5 EPs out in the past 2 years. You guys kill me with that EP shit. You guys should drop mixtapes and full projects. The EP, to me, the EP, and I was just telling somebody this this morning, an EP is for like, you want to surprise your fans. Or you owe your fans a project, but it's still getting mixed, or you wait no clarity or something. So I'm gonna put out this little four pack of songs to hold you over. But to just give us the EP, like that's the bread and butter. I I, I can't stand it. I, I don't like the EP shit. Moving forward, Lee, that shit long. Uh, music videos are seven. I did like the NLE um, video he did. Nine and beat selection. And beats is his best thing going. Like the beat just carries the whole song, in, in my opinion. The whole, both of his singles, the beat carries the the song. A six and Brandon. Because we have seen him on No Jepper, we have seen him um, sign the Alamo Records recently and, and do some good business with them. Uh, Eight in originality, I can't really name too many people he sounds like, but he does have a rural sound, so I would say like a true car or somebody like that. Um, and then the seven in versatility, which averaged out to a 67, which is a D, plus, which is what Jason Cash got last year. So hopefully next year, Lambo Fall has a B or C or even an A. Next up is Airplane James. So today, he drops his project, Still Her. And uh, make sure you go check that out. I can't wait to listen to it once I leave here. And uh, he got an 84, which is a B. And so his lyricism is an A because it's solid. His impact's a five. People still ask him, who the fuck is Airplane James? Who's Airplane James? But that's gonna change soon uh, once he makes his label announcement. Um, Cadence is an eight, dope voice. Flow's a nine. Catalog is a six, but after I hear this uh, project that he just dropped today, it might be higher than a six, but when I made this, it was a six. Uh, Tenny Consistency, he dropped the Who the Fuck is Airplane James EP the week after the first report card drop, and then he came with Low Key Hurt later on in the year, so he does have EPs on deck. Um, uh, I'm tired of saying the EP word. Ten in music videos, Alan B. and Drew Robinson are some of the best directors in Los Angeles on the West Coast. Make sure you tap in with them. Um, they do a lot of his videos, and they always have stories to his videos. The Sliding Up Manchester video is crazy. Um, the new new video is crazy. Uh, Brandon Wise playing has a nine. We saw him do the East Side Special event at Louisiana Fried Chicken earlier this year. We've seen him do uh, different merch collaborations. We've seen him. He's decked out in Pro Club 24-7 and does creative shoots with them. He's been a part of my uh, Diamond Supply Add over the summer the new LA rap scene with him and Wally and Jason Cash and the late Key Riches. So, playing has been active as far as modeling as well. Um, where was that? Originality 10 to me, it's like okay, he has a bit of Dom Kennedy, but he's more of a rap singer. So, Dom doesn't, doesn't see, so I'm not going to take a point off. So, a 10 in originality and versatility is an 8, which gave, gave us an 84, which is a B. Next up is Everybody's favorite, Zoe Osama, Mr. Underrated. He has like the hottest record in LA streets right now. Everybody's posting it, everybody's doing the dance challenge to it. It's viral on TikTok. Um, he made our 2022 LA Freshman cover as well. So Zoe had a, has a nine in lyricism, a five in impact, but that's gonna change obviously, especially if he drops a, if he does an underrated remix with a big artist, or if he drops an underrated uh, mixtape, Part two, it doesn't franchise on some Amio just read up shit. His impact will change. So let's put that on record. A 10 in cadence, a 10 in flow, the nigga can rap. Uh, seven in catalog, he has maybe four or five projects out. Underrated is just the one that broke through that caught my attention last year when I was in the studio around like February. Uh, seven in music videos, hood videos, but it'd be a lot of, you know, like crib walking and, and fundamental West Coast vibes old school cars and just, he's very nostalgic. He'll do modern things, but he'll influx some of the old school principles that we saw in music videos back in the day from LA. Um, beat selection of 10, the underrated beat is crazy. And a lot of his beats are G-Funk inspired, old song flip, uh, flip with a new mix or whatnot. Uh, six in branding, a nine in originality because I took a point off because some people would say the G Perico thing, so I'm like, nah, let me just knock something off real quick. And then the six in versatility, which gives us an 80, which is a B minus, which is real dope for a debut. Next is my girl Ash Bash, man. 
That Rico shit is funny as fuck. I can't stop thinking about the Rico shit. I love I was tempted to put it on here, like Ash Bash, parentheses, Rico. Because she was like, I want to hear from the Rico guy. We still have her from here. <laughs> Anywho, uh, she got a six. No, her grade is a D. So she had an F last year. She had to prove a little bit. Based strictly off freestyle, because this woman has not put out a project <laughs> since. But she's been going crazy with the freestyles and with the internet presence. So let's get to her grade. She got a six in lyricism, a five in impact, a five in cadence, a four in flow. She has to improve with the flow. Catalog is a is a five, a generous five. Uh, Consistency is a three. She hasn't dropped the project uh, since 2021. Uh, excuse me, a six in music videos. Um, she uses a lot of the popular peer spaces that I be seeing. A lot of the popular peer spaces that I see in different LA rappers videos, I do want to step that up and find some you know, exclusive locations or get creative with the videos. 10 and B selection. Uh, all the best producers in LA lay so with great beats. I just want to hear maybe some better writing over these beats, but the beats still be hard. So, 10 and B selection. Um, a 9 in Brandon. She does have her own store, hair products, beauty products. She's going to be one of those ladies that have a beauty empire. Once she gets that financial backing or she signs a deal or something to that effect, she's definitely going to, she's about her money. She is a hustler. And I feel like she'll have a bigger career outside of rap than she does inside of rap given the beauty empire stuff. Attending originality because again, you gotta think there aren't too many popular or uh, prominent women rappers from Los Angeles. So our women, uh, our female rappers on this list are gonna get a 10 or a high grade in originality because there's nothing to compare them to. You gotta say we haven't had prominent female rappers since the boss, Yo Yo, Lady of Rage, that was the 90s, so. And then uh, lastly, she got a 10 in versatility. So that's a D which was a 66. All right, next up is my guy Reason from Top Dog Entertainment. Um, last year, I accidentally left him off. He hit me up like, like, man, why I'm not on here? So I'm like, I'm gonna put you on there next time. As a man of my word, I put him on here. He got a 68, which is a D plus, following the Carson tradition of getting D pluses, shout out to Jason Cash. So he got a nine in lyricism, um, a five in impact, a five in cadence, um, let's talk about that five and I feel like his voice is dry, his voice is flat, it's, um, it's not really remarkable. It's warm, but that's it. That's the best thing I can say about it. His voice is warm. Pause. Uh, eight in flow, I feel like he could be uh, a little bit more charismatic as far as the flow, but he's not a bad rapper. It's just these are certain notes that I feel like could influx or elate his, um, his music to me. Uh, four in catalog, doesn't have a classic project whatsoever. Five consistency, haven't dropped a full length project since like 2020. So let's get on that reason. Eight in music videos, I did like um, the video for the J Rock record he did. I thought that was dope. And another single, he dropped maybe four or five singles last year, and they all had dope visuals. I'll give him that. Um, a five in B selection, as most top dog entertainment artists, as most TV artists, they pick the most obscure. Oh, let me go against the grain and artsy farty types of, types of beats. But it's like, okay, when I get in my car, what can I do with that? You get what I'm saying? Like, don't just impress bloggers with those type of beats. I'm, I'm not a blogger 24 7. I, I get in my car and I listen to music and I smoke and I do stuff like a normal human. Where's the functional records? I don't, I don't have that from him. Let's be practical about it as well. Um, and then use those artsy farty type of out my guard beats as like icing on top or the cherry on top of a project. Don't use that as the basis of your project in regards to me at least. Um, a six in Brandon, we've seen him do Breakfast Club interviews and um, you know, interact with Elliot Wilson and the B Dots. He's very, he's very popular on the editorial circuit. So I, I give him a decent grade in, um, in, in Brandon. A 10 in originality. Can't really think of anybody he sounds like, whether that's good or bad. A 10 in versatility. Um, because he has made music about different topics. And he does touch on a lot of things that I like. Conscious music, uh, introspective music, stuff like that. Which averaged out to a 68, which is the D plus. Next up is Dollar Boy Mike, who's like more so a rap singer. Definitely makes some trap music, but I've heard him over LA production as well, but he's definitely made trap music. So he has, um, he'll, he'll be our third or fourth F for the day. A 64, right there, because a 65 is a D minus, I believe. So he's on the cusp of, uh, of passing. Hopefully next year he passes. So he got a seven in lyricism. A two in impact because most people don't know who he is. He doesn't really have a buzz yet. A seven in cadence 
solid, Salmon and Flow, solid. Uh, three in catalog, his uh, project, his latest project, To Hold You Over Three, is, it was a solid effort, but I just need to hear more um, sincerity from him in his music. I definitely want to hear, also want to hear like better mixing, better quality, and beat-wise, I just want to hear, you know, give him some energy, give him something that he can really work with. He is, on paper, he's a dope artist, but if I was in these rooms with him, I would definitely tell him like, okay, now we're gonna get you over this type of beat, and we're gonna leave the YouTube sounding beats alone. Um, consistency, I tell you, he does have several projects, like I just said, he dropped a franchise with three installments, so that's what it is. Uh, music videos wise, he has a five. I feel like a lot of his videos give like peer space. Uh, B selection is six. Uh, Brandon is four. Originality is ten. I can't name artists. It sounds like that's dope. Versatility is ten. He'll make love records. He'll make pain music. That's the thing I want to touch on. He makes pain music, and that's interesting. I like to hear somebody be vulnerable about their emotions, about depression, hard days, bad thoughts, good thoughts, whatever. So I give him that. So he got a 64, which is an F, like I said, but it's right there under a passing grade. So hopefully next year he passes. Let's talk about Ruchi. Uh, when I first dropped the report card, I remember he didn't say it in my room, or he might have said it in my space. He definitely said it in another space that this was something that I didn't need to do again. So I'm doing it again. And uh, Ruchi got an A in lyricism. So his overall grade is 85, which is a B. He did great, mind you. So he got an eight in lyricism because the man can rap, solid. Impact's an eight. He's definitely one of the most prominent names on our rap scene. I'm just trying to get, I would look, I'm, trying, I'm just talking like I'm his manager. I would like to see him in that top five conversation. If I was his manager, I wouldn't sleep until he was in that top five, top three West Coast artist conversation. Uh, because he, he has the potential and he deserves it. He's hardworking and he has the fans and he has the presence he, and he has the story. I just, for whatever reason, why isn't he in that top three, top five conversation? Cadence is a nine, uh, Flow's a 10, and then he can rap. Seven catalog, El Perro 2 that he dropped last year was a really dope project, man. And El Perro 1 is somewhat of a classic mixtape. So uh, catalog's a seven. Consistency's a 10, he dropped a, dog, a doggy house record and just different EPs and stuff for his fans. Um, music videos are seven. You know, those Mac and Cole videos, it's just kind of be like house party every time. So, you know, we're kind of looking for, we get tequila bottles and stuff like that, and the big blunts and all that. Kind of looking for uh, something more on the music and video front. But seven is solid. It's not, it's not bad or nothing. It's solid. B Selection 7, again, um, Killer Cam and, and, you know, Romo and different people he's worked with production-wise. It's okay, but it's like, they'll be Ruchi type of beats. And I want to hear him over something just like cinematic, you feel me? If he's not going to go pop, if he's not going to chase the pop lane and just make party record, party records, party records with clean structures, then, okay, go in the other direction and give us cinematic, movie-feeling, bigger-than-life feeling records. I feel like, so I feel like I would like to see him work with some different producers. I would like to see Richie work with Michael Keys or somebody like that. I want to hear him work with just producers that, Easy Boys, producers that use instrumentation and that can really... He, he'll bring the ratchet, and I want to hear somebody bring the G-Funk. And I feel like that perfect marriage, that's how you get in my crazy life. You blend G-Funk with ratchet music. Um, that was Beats. Brandon is a nine. The Mac and Cole brand is present. Uh, Rucci's brand is present. Him always aligning projects with, like, dogs and having a character and the artwork be crazy. I feel like that's something. And uh, recreating the Snoop Dogg doggy style covers, that's a part of Brandon that's going to uh, be singed in my mind for it. Forever, when I think of him, I think of those uh, album covers. Originality is a 10, because Ruchi is one of a kind. He, to me, he's one of those, he's like a YG, a Snoop Dogg, he's one of those characters. So this kind of goes back to Brandon. Like, imagine once Ruchi starts doing TV shows and has a vlog series on YouTube and different things like that, that'd be dope. And then a nine of Versilli would give him an 85, which is a B, one of our highest scores that we've talked about so far. Uh, next up is Baby Stone Gorillas who got a 80, which is a B minus, uh, shout out to them. They're a traffic rap group, but they're, you know, they're like the most dangerous group in LA rap. So they got a seven in lyricism, a seven in impact, an eight in cadence, an eight in flows. And this is between all four. It's kind of hard to grade a four member group, but, a, but an eight in flow, 
uh, six in catalog. Their debut was dope. And we, we're getting a new project from them this month. We just didn't make the deadline for this this particular report card. A 10 in consistency, a six in music videos, a 10 in beat selection. Their beats are probably the best thing about them. The beats are hard hitting. They'll have G-Funk samples. They'll have ratchet music. They'll have track music. It's just a whole mix of uh, West Coast production, different sounds. Like I said, G-Funk, ratchet traffic. That's perfect. Um, Brandon's a nine. I know they have the Wii screen. I forgot the name with Backpack Boys. Um, it's like Gorilla something or something, but it's on brand. That merch goes crazy. Uh, so, a 10 in originality, Baby Sun Gorilla's are one of a kind. Uh, only thing you can compare them to is Shoreline Mafia. And they're like, they're Shoreline Mafia turned on his head. It's like, okay, we're the real Mafia type Shoreline. So, uh, versatility is like eight which is cool, because they make the Keep Going record. That's the reason why it's not like a six or a seven, because they have made that. It's one of their lead singles was an inspiring, motivational record. And that gives you an 80, which is a B minus. The last name on this list, one of my favorites, believe it or not, despite his grade being a 68 D plus, is HBK, Jachi. So Jachi made the 2022 LA Freshman Covers. I love his uh, work ethic. I love how hard he uh, goes for a stance. I love how he carries himself. But you'll see why his grade is a 68. So his lyricism is an 8. The nigga can rap. Uh, his impact's a 4. He's still low-key. People are still going to say who when you bring him up. He hasn't really left, made his mark, but he will be soon. His cadence is a 10. So pay attention to this. His cadence is a 10. I love his voice and, and, and his approach to record making. But his flow's a 3. Why? Because he uses that same choppy flow on every fucking song he puts out. So every time I do a write-up, I make sure to put it in there like, yeah, he's using that same flow or his signature flow, his signature flow. He keeps using it. And it's very like, yada, 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 It's very choppy. Like, I can guess what he's going to say because it's very choppy. And I just want him to use a different flow. It worked on Shady Freestyle. It worked on Vanilla Cream Soda. But I can keep listening to them songs if I want to keep hearing that flow being used. So I feel like he needs to switch that up. Uh, catalog is a six. He has dropped a lot of projects. And his last project, The People's Champ, had the uh, uh, trophies record with Coop Corleone, which was cool. And he had Caleb Ferrero, another record, which was solid as well. Uh, as well as the, he did a feature for R3 that was crazy. Uh, Posse, the Posse record. I, I love that feature. Because uh, this is a 10. He drops projects, he drops music all the time. The Fly Shit record with Coop Corleone, another record with Coop that he did was dope. That he just dropped as a new single. So he drops some music. Music videos are six, solid. B selection, no limit Austin, man. Keep doing your thing. You one of the best producers coming out of LA. I know you hit me up like, oh, I didn't make your producer of the year list. Nigga, you was 11. You know, I feel like uh, once you move on, not just move on, because keep working with Jachi, but once you start getting bigger names on your beats, then we can have you in that conversation. Um, Brandon Wise is a five. He was on Stay Hungry ENT. I thought that was his label. But then he's not on Stay Hungry NT. He's not, you know, working with Lil Bobby and Will Benz anymore. I feel like them coming in as a crew would have been perfect because they're like these guys from Westmont. That would have been a whole movement, but somehow there's dismay or in disarray. So that's that. Uh, originality is a 10. He's one of a kind. And versatility is a 3. Going back to that flow being the same, his topics being the same. That gave us a 68D. Plus, again, I love Jachi's. I love Jachi. As a rapper, but as an artist, I need to see more creativity. All right, well, that concludes the grading for the new LA Rap Report card for 2023. Um, I feel like our artists did a little better this year. I've definitely seen a lot of progression from some of the artists. Some of the artists stayed in the same category, but some of them stepped it up some. And, you know, shout out to them. And we'll definitely see you in June when we do the progress report card. So, see you soon.